Hi, my name's Jeff Wolf. I'm a sculptor, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the horse, the individual horse head, and how I start this in all my classes. In all my classes, my first time students, it uh, doesn't matter whether they're a seasoned professional sculptor or a beginner, I start with a, the horse skull. And the reason being is it's easier to read than the human skull. It's more elongated, and basically it's, it's got every aspect that a human skull has in it. And this will relate to a deer skull, a cow skull, an elk skull, any uh, vegetation-eating animal, that it all is relative. So what I do with my students is, is try to get them to visualize shapes and forms and how these shapes and forms relate to one another. Um, there is a big shape. You've got your basic shape is an abstract triangle on the profile. And it is an abstract diamond shape from the front of you. Uh, I hope you can see that. Now coming back to the to the horse head itself, there's there's a number of different shapes in here, and I and I use a method called sculpting from the inside out. So in my classes. We start with the, the basic shapes, and then we start adding these pieces like pieces of puzzle. So there's a football shape right in here. And then we get into the mechanics of the jaw, and, and these are all individual shapes. And then the, the jaw line, of course, and then the orbit of the eye. And then there's a teardrop shape that creates the frontal part of the orbit of the eye. And then of course you come down into the nasal cavity and the mouth. And then we go from there. You've got your basic shapes. And then we start laying the muscles on. And we do the same thing. We lay the muscles on from the innermost muscle out to the, to the most prominent muscles. Now on a horse head, and with any animal, there, there are certain landmarks, I like to call them landmarks, that should show up in all of your, whether it's sculpture, painting, um, any medium that you want to use, these landmarks uh, are going to be visible. The corner of the eye, the Y, or the mechanics of the jaw, the bridge of the nose, the indentation of the um, cranium or the brain cavity. And these are basically the main uh, landmarks. And also the, this cheekbone or jawline uh, that comes down, there's always a, a point. Now it'll fade and in different horses, they're like people, there's different characteristics. But this point will always be prominent. You'll always see that. And those are basically the, the main landmarks that you want to look for in a sculpture or painting any medium. So that kind of explains the, the horse head. And although the, the whole body uh, sculpture study that I have is probably the most popular, this one will teach you probably more than anything. If you go through this process and sculpt this skull several times before attempting the, the whole body, everything else becomes relative and you start understanding how these uh, bone structures and muscles all relate to one another. And, uh, and it, it carries throughout the entire piece. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really matter what animal you're, you're sculpting, uh, you will understand exactly um, what these shapes and forms look like, and it just speeds your process up uh, tremendously. I'm going to uh, pick up the human skull, and I'm going to point out a few things uh, with it that relate. 
relates to the to the horse head, and I, I know that a lot of my students find this quite amazing when I point these things out. But if you look at the cheekbone, it's the same as the cheekbone on this horse. If you condense that horse skull, you would come up with a human skull. You've got the temporal ridge, and there's the temporal ridge on the on the horse skull. You've got this landmark on the corner of the eye, same as the, as the horse skull. Uh, the reason I start with the horse skull, I believe I mentioned that before, it's just easier to read than the human skull. It's, the human skull is a little more complex. Uh, it's still simple, but, but there are some things that for some reason are harder to understand on the human skull than it is the the horse skull, but even the nasal cavity comes down and it's it's basically the same. I think we were all made from the same blueprint and then a, a blueprint was adjusted to, to fit each individual need of whatever creature it, it was. But uh, even the mechanics of the jaw um, are quite similar. Uh, like I mentioned before, the cheekbone, um, even this area right in here is quite a bit the same. Now I'll turn this around and you can see a lot of the same muscle structure in the face as you do uh, with the equine skull. I'll start with the muscles around the mouth. It's basically the same. You've got this muscle that comes down to the corner of the mouth. It's basically the same. This muscle that comes across to the mouth that pulls the mouth back and forth. It's basically the same. This muscle that comes down from the uh, bridge of the nose down to the top of the mouth. It's basically the same. Uh, and then your big cheekbone muscle. That's basically the same. You see the cheekbone here. This is uh, the landmark on, on the front of the cheekbone, which is right here on the equine skull. So that's pretty much um, basically uh, what I wanted. What I wanted to get across. the The human skull, of course, is slightly different, and this is somewhat of an egg shape. It's a two-part uh, piece. You've got your egg shape and then you've got an abstract triangle um, here for the lower jaw. Same with the front. It's an abstract triangle and then you've got the round cranium egg shape on the top. So I hope this has been helpful. These little studies are are very important uh, important tool to have in your studio. Uh, I use them all the time myself, and like I mentioned before, you can find them on the Western Art Rodeo Association website, and uh, and they are for sale.